One of the things I want to talk about is um, I'm on a lot of these forums um, reading about bikes and I read a lot of magazines and obviously I'm on YouTube and I'm watching other people's vlogs and all the rest of it. And a lot of people seem to have uh, a strange attitude to breaking in turns. They're like, oh, you must never break in turns. But um, I don't know what planet these people live on because it's, it's nigh on impossible to well, certainly around where I live, it's not impossible to ride around without breaking in turns. Like, look, look at this. We're heading down this road, and we're we're going into a roundabout. So we're leaned over, left, and I have to slow down. sometimes. Is it ideal? No. But you can totally do it. I don't know if you guys um I'm probably gonna have to create some graphics for this so I'm just thinking now. How am I gonna explain this? Each tire has a coefficient of grip. Basically means there's a certain amount the tire can grip against the road before it gives up. So if you imagine a very, very simple theoretical tire, it can give, let's say, it can put up with one G of force in every given direction. So when you're leaned over on the left side and you're going around a turn, about one G of force on that tire, it will generate one G of turning force. So if you weigh 100 pounds and you're going around this turn generating 1G, there's 100 pounds pushing you to the left side or the right side. And that same tire can probably generate about a 1G of braking and accelerating force as well. Now, in normal road riding, you never get anywhere near the limits of the tire, or you shouldn't, if you are doing this on the street, there's there's probably a bit of an issue with your driving and you're you're probably a squid and you're probably not interested. But uh good luck to you. So if you think about it the grip of the tire in all directions, so turning, accelerating, braking, it's probably around 1G. Now in the, in the real world, some tires actually accelerate and brake a little bit better than 1G and at the same time they might turn a little bit less than 1G, but you, instead of having a completely circular graph to show the grip of the tire, it's a bit of an oval or whatever else, it looks more like a football than a, than a soccer ball. But um, the idea is the same. If, if you're using some accelerating force, you can use some turning force. If you're using a lot of turning force, there's only, well, let's say, okay, let, let's simplify it. Our theoretical tire can give us one G of grip in any given direction. So what if we're leaned over in a turn going quite quick? Let's say we're using about 0.75 G. That still means there's 25% of the grip of that tire left for other things like braking or accelerating. So it, let's, in typical street riding, let's say you take a left-hand bend and you're only generating half a G and you're on neutral throttle or just a little bit of acceleration just to keep the bike nice and stable you're still only pulling half a G. And if you get into this turn, like this one up here, and you think, oh, I need a little bit of brake. If you're very gentle with the front brake, so you can generate some braking force, so you're probably using, you know, 10% of what's available of the braking force, while only using 50% of what's available of the cornering force, you're still at 60% of what's totally available. So you're doing both, but obviously 
the more turning force you have, the less scope you have to hit the brakes. And the more braking you have on, the less scope you have to turn. So you have to balance these two things. This muck is nasty. Um, I took you guys down this road before on a just a nice road, vlog, and uh, I got to the end of it, and well, I quite abruptly got to the end of it without realizing it was the end of it. And I said, oh, I don't know where this road goes, so I'll just go back the other way. But now I know where it goes, so I'm going to go there. But yeah, on on this theoretical G-force, I'm going to I'll, I'll do some graphics for it, and I'll put them up on the screen, even though it's going to take time and editing and uh, all that stuff. Anyway, so you can break in a turn. And if we're thinking just about the front wheel, the, the front wheel's not really as, it's not really given up when you're putting accelerating forces through it, it's just kind of being dragged along. So really, you're only worried about braking and turning with your front wheel and whether it's going to stick or not. Um, so it's, it's simpler and it's what you should be thinking about. And the other thing is, right, when you have the bike leaned over, and you start to gently, gently apply the front brake. I usually use like three or four fingers on the brake lever. But if I'm in a turn and I decide I need to slow down while turning, I will usually only use one or two fingers to do it. You want to be very, very slow and progressive with it. And like one of the other vloggers said, and I can't remember which one, but it's, it's like squeezing an orange is what you should be thinking about. If you just... There's this stop. If you just go, that's it. You're going to get juice everywhere but in your glass. If you're very, very gentle with it, all the juice ends up in the glass. 